The word belief is a difficult thing for me. I don't believe it. I must have a reason for a certain hypothesis. Either I know a thing, and then I know it, I don't need to believe it. We shall probably get nearest to the truth if we think of the conscious and personal psyche as resting upon the broad basis of an inherited and universal psychic disposition which is as such unconscious, and that our psyche bears the same relation to the collective psyche as the individual to society. A particularly beautiful woman is a source of terror. As a rule, a beautiful woman is a terrible disappointment. Masses are always breeding grounds of psychic epidemics. It is a fact that cannot be denied, the wickedness of others becomes our wickedness because it kindles something evil in our hearts. Follow that will and that way which experience confirms to be your own. Your vision will become clear only when you can look into your own heart. Who looks outside, dreams, who looks inside, awakes. Without this playing with fantasy, no creative work has ever yet come to birth. The debt we owe to the play of the imagination is incalculable. The pendulum of the mind alternates between sense and nonsense, not between right and wrong. As far as we can discern, the sole purpose of human existence is to kindle a light in the darkness of mere being. Everything that irritates us about others can lead us to an understanding of ourselves. A human being would certainly not grow to be 70 or 80 years old if this longevity had no meaning for the species. The afternoon of human life must also have a significance of its own and cannot be merely a pitiful appendage to life's morning. I have treated many hundreds of patients. Among those in the second half of life, that is to say, over 35, there has not been one whose problem in the last resort was not that of finding a religious outlook on life. Through pride, we are ever deceiving ourselves. But deep down below the surface of the average conscience, a still, small voice says to us, something is out of tune. Mistakes are, after all, the foundations of truth, and if a man does not know what a thing is, it is at least an increase in knowledge if he knows what it is not. We should not pretend to understand the world only by the intellect. The judgment of the intellect is only part of the truth. The meeting of two personalities is like the contact of two chemical substances, if there is any reaction, both are transformed. Knowing your darkness is the best method for dealing with the darknesses of other people. Dreams are the guiding words of the soul. Why should I henceforth not love my dreams and not make their riddling images into objects of my daily consideration? If one does not understand a person, one tends to regard him as a fool. We cannot change anything until we accept it. Condemnation does not liberate, it oppresses. The collective unconscious consists of the sum of the instincts and their correlates, the archetypes. Just as everybody possesses instincts, so he also possesses a stock of archetypal images. Man's task is to become conscious of the contents that press upward from the unconscious. Often the hands will solve a mystery that the intellect has struggled with in vain. The debt we owe to the play of imagination is incalculable. In all chaos, there is a cosmos, in all disorder a secret order. There is no such thing as a pure introvert or extrovert. Such a person would be in the lunatic asylum. For a young person, it is almost a sin, or at least a danger, to be too preoccupied with himself, but for the aging person, it is a duty and a necessity to devote serious attention to himself. The word happy would lose its meaning if it were not balanced by sadness. 
Every form of addiction is bad, no matter whether the narcotic is alcohol or morphine or idealism. Man needs difficulties, they are necessary for health. The healthy man does not torture others, generally it is the tortured who turn into torturers. Who looks outside, dreams, who looks inside, awakes. All the works of man have their origin in creative fantasy. What right have we then to depreciate imagination? Even a happy life cannot be without a measure of darkness, and the word happy would lose its meaning if it were not balanced by sadness. It is far better to take things as they come along with patience and equanimity. When an inner situation is not made conscious, it appears outside as fate. Knowledge rests not upon truth alone, but upon error also. A scream is always just that, a noise and not music. There is no birth of consciousness without pain. One looks back with appreciation to the brilliant teachers, but with gratitude to those who touched our human feelings. The curriculum is so much necessary raw material, but warmth is the vital element for the growing plant and the soul of the child. We are born at a given moment, in a given place and, like vintage years of wine, we have the qualities of the year and of the season of which we are born. Astrology does not lay claim to anything more. Neurosis is always a substitute for legitimate suffering. Nobody, as long as he moves about among the chaotic currents of life, is without trouble. It all depends on how we look at things, and not how they are in themselves. If there is anything that we wish to change in the child, we should first examine it and see whether it is not something that could better be changed in ourselves. The man who promises everything is sure to fulfill nothing, and everyone who promises too much is in danger of using evil means to carry out his promises, and is already on the road to perdition. The creation of something new is not accomplished by the intellect but by the play instinct acting from inner necessity. The creative mind plays with the objects it loves. A man who has not passed through the inferno of his passions has never overcome them. Show me a sane man and I will cure him for you. Resistance to the organized mass can be affected only by the man who is as well organized in his individuality as the mass itself. The greatest and most important problems of life are all fundamentally insoluble. They can never be solved but only outgrown. The shoe that fits one person pinches another, there is no recipe for living that suits all cases. Children are educated by what the grown-up is and not by his talk. The least of things with a meaning is worth more in life than the greatest of things without it. We deem those happy who from the experience of life have learned to bear its ills without being overcome by them. The most intense conflicts, if overcome, leave behind a sense of security and calm that is not easily disturbed. It is just these intense conflicts and their conflagration which are needed to produce valuable and lasting results. Shrinking away from death is something unhealthy and abnormal which robs the second half of life of its purpose. There is no coming to consciousness without pain. Who has fully realized that history is not contained in thick books but lives in our very blood? Where love rules, there is no will to power, and where power predominates, their love is lacking. The one is the shadow of the other. 